Hello everybody, my name is Kristof Mikuláš Trávníček and welcome to my second ever video on the Royal Chess YouTube channel. Today I decided to make a video about how to play a certain type of positions. I hope you all know that probably the best way to learn some chess opening is to look at model games where the opening was played and to learn the typical motifs that occur in that opening. Ok, so I chose a short but fairly instructive game. It's the game Tatai Korčnoj from 1978, when Korčnoj was really one of the best players at that time together with Karpov. Well, so the game went e4, e6. I can say that the French defense is one of my favorite openings. Now d4, d5 and white decided to exchange on d5. Some people who play the French may say that this is a slightly unpleasant variation for them because such players often strive for more dynamic positions. On the other hand, white gives up his opening advantage very early. I'm not saying that it's impossible to win with white from such opening, but this continuation is just very drawish compared to others. White played bishop d3, but now there is a very good continuation c5, which happened in the game. As you can see, black is not afraid of having an isolated pawn on d5. This can happen after the potential exchange on c5. The point is that in these structures, white's bishop isn't very well placed on d3. Why? When you play against the isolated queen's pawn, you want to put some piece, usually a knight, on the square in front of that pawn, in this case on d4. But when white's light squared bishop is on d3, white's task of achieving that is harder, because the bishop is blocking the view of white's queen. That's the reason why white would be happier if he had the bishop on e2 and not on d3. In the game white played knight f3 because he doesn't want to develop black's dark squared bishop right away. It would be more favorable for white if black spent a tempo on playing let's say bishop d6 because only then white would take on c5 and black would have to lose a tempo on taking back. After knight f3 Black played knight c6 and now queen e2 check happened. This is a double-edged decision. White wants to temporarily win a pawn, but black won't have any problems with his development, while the queen on e2 may become a target. After knight c6, the safest option is to play c3 with the idea that after c takes e4, white can recapture with the c pawn. The position would be very equal, but personally I would probably prefer c3 to other moves. The game continued bishop e7, d takes c5, knight f6, and now h3. This is clearly an inaccuracy. It's obvious that White prevents black from playing bishop g4 with an unpleasant pin, but he's omitting his development. Black castled, white also castled, and now bishop takes c5 happened. And we can see that black already has a really good position. Now white played c3. This may seem logical, but again, white doesn't develop any piece and now his position is already extremely bad. After rook e8 and queen c2, I recommend you to pause the video and think for a while about what to play with black here. Try to find some strong continuation. So there is a strong move queen d6, which was also played in the game. I guess that for those of you who are familiar with this structure, it wasn't hard, 
but still, it's a nice idea and it's very useful to remember it. Also, compared to some similar positions where white has a pawn on e3 instead of c3, in this position black is strongly threatening the move queen to g3, because after queen g3 black will be able to play bishop takes h3 with a decisive attack. In some similar positions black might also have another idea. He could create a so-called battery by moving the bishop to c7. Here it isn't necessary because the bishop is attacking the f2 pawn so it's very active. After queen d6 white played knight bd2 which doesn't prevent the move queen g3 but white's position is just very bad after any move. After king h1 instead of knight bd2 black would play knight d4 with for example bishop f5 next and white would lose soon. So in the game black played queen g3 threatening bishop takes h3 and white's position is just hopeless. White continued bishop f5 preventing bishop takes h3 and what would you play as black here? You can pause the video and think. Kochnoi came up with the move rook e2. This is a strong and natural move increasing the pressure on the f2 pawn. As I said white's position is definitively lost. White tried the move knight d4, he wants to cover this g1 a7 diagonal and again try to find the best continuation for black. It's nothing hard, Kochnoi played knight takes d4 and white just resigned. It may seem really incredible that black won in 14 moves and in an exchange French against a player with a rating of 2450. But on the other hand, black did only quite easy and logical moves. So I have to recommend you to try out this c5 line against the move bishop d3. I hope you enjoyed watching this game, my analysis and the whole video. This is everything from me for now. Thank you for your attention and see you in some next video. Goodbye.